so this is a bonus series that I wanted to do to really interact with you guys on how each of us are reacting to the pandemic because each of us see it, interpret it, and react to the pandemic in our own personality styles. It's like we're, we all wear our own set of lenses on and we see it, then we perceive it, and then we react to it in that unique way. And so much of it comes down to the core motivations that we've talked often about. But I think it's gonna be really helpful for us to see through the lens of other types because this is the time for us to come together to show compassion and empathy, understanding, mercy, grace, and forgiveness. Because a lot of emotions are going, a lot of fear and anxieties, frustrations, and if we do not recognize our own patterns, then we will quickly derail into our own common pitfalls for our own type, and that's only going to harm ourselves and all the relationships that we have. And right now, each of us are connected to one another in this pandemic, whether we realize it or not. And so as we focus on Christ, as we move towards being more like him, he is our perfect example of in the midst of trial and tribulation, how do we extend kindness, patience, forbearing love, and all the things that we see him exhibit. How do we do that? Well, it's super hard in this time. So the series I want you to first and foremost, see through the lens of the other types and how they're reacting. Now, that's typically hard for us um, because we see it the way we see it. We react the way we react, and especially when we are struggling, our personality's hardwiring is more constrained. The more that we seek God and we rest in Him and His provisions and we know who we are and we feel secure in that, the more that those constraints are loosened and it gives us the opportunity to grow and to transform into being who we were created to be more like Christ in the uniqueness of our personality type. But in these really trying times, the more that we aren't focusing on Christ, the more constrained we are and the more we do our personalities patterns and the more we insist other people do it the way we see it. So without us knowing how we're reacting and why, the more we're gonna veer off course and fall in the same common pitfalls, which you're gonna be frustrated with yourself, you're gonna be frustrated with others, and that's not helpful. So let's together put down rumble strips, you know, the rumble strips on the highway that alert us that we're about to veer off course. So I'm gonna show you how the types are reacting and why, and then to help kind of navigate you through how to relate to others in that season, okay? All right, so this series is called How Each Type is Reacting to the Pandemic. Now, let's start with type ones. Type ones, they're upset that others are not following the rules and hoarding resources. Example, toilet paper. Now, for some of you, you're like, why is that? Why are they so upset? Well, remember, for the ones, they want to follow the rules and procedures. If everyone were to follow the rules and the procedures, the pandemic wouldn't spread because they've told us to stay in and things would get better. But because people are not following the rules, this is what's happening. It really upsets the ones because they see the injustice of it and they want to bring in correct measures and tell people how to act responsibly so that this thing will pass over. So if you put on the lens of the type one, you'll recognize how this can be a really frustrating um, time for them because they see all the things that are going wrong and it is leaping out at them and assaulting them. Their loud inner critic is not letting up until something gets fixed. And frankly, this isn't gonna go away for the foreseeable future, right? So come alongside your type ones and ask how they're doing, how this is a struggle for them, and is there anything that you can do to support them in the world of imperfection? How can you care for them? How can you love them? All right, so our type twos in how they react in these circumstances, what a lot of you have said is that you're devastated, that you cannot connect and help others 
so that you are desperate in trying to find virtual ways to help others. So the type twos out there, I've had two twos that I'm close to, uh, one in Spain and one here in uh, Franklin, that have reached out to me to do series like this because they, they're locked in. They literally cannot help anyone. Uh, one um, has a soul, uh, shoulder surgery, and so she literally cannot help anyone right now. She's recovering. And then the other one is in Spain, and they are in complete lockdown. And they feel so desperate to help the world. So they've asked me, like, can you do something? Can you say something? This is a really hard time for type twos because they are literally restrained from connecting with others, which is a huge priority for them, to physically connect, give gifts, uh, service, whatever it is. They see the needs of the world right now and the compassion they have, just like Christ, it feels like a gut, a punch in the gut. Now, I'm not saying Jesus was a two. Jesus is not a type. We reflect God in our unique ways in our type. What I'm saying is the word compassion that was used with Christ is similar to the feeling that the twos have in this moment of that feels like a punch in the gut that they can't, that the twos can't do anything. They see the needs. So how you can love the twos in your life right now is to recognize that they are really struggling by being constrained and not being able to help. Give them some ideas of getting on virtually. Uh, Zoom is a great option of having a get together with a bunch of people, listening, praying, um, reading scripture, doing something that there is connection. But recognize this is a really hard season for our type twos and for these reasons. Now, type threes, the type threes, how they're reacting is that they're strategizing the best way to get through the crisis. They're going to develop goals and plans and then immediately get busy in accomplishing these new goals in the most efficient and effective way. So the type threes see this as an opportunity to re-strategize what needs to happen, make a plan, get things in order, and then to conquer that plan so that they feel like they're accomplishing something even in the midst of struggle and hardship. And so the threes are gonna be very focused on getting the next thing done, which in some ways is a really helpful and good thing, but it can also become extremely difficult for the three because we are in absolute uncertain times. We don't know from day to day what's the next thing that's getting shut down. We don't know what can and can't happen. Can their plans actually be accomplished or not? And then, like, let's say you're a homeschool family. You've got your kids at home and you've made all the plans. Well, guess what? Kids do not necessarily want to follow the incredible plans that you come up with. Or maybe you had your daily routine all figured out and now it is just turned upside down. All of these things can be so hard and frustrating for the type three because they can't accomplish what they used to accomplish. And then even if they do come up with new plans, it could be thwarted at any minute with what's going on. And so for us to recognize how this is a really hard season for the threes as well, plus threes, when they are ready to get focused, they wanna just get in there and stay focused. And if you've got family now at home and because you're all quarantined, that might be thrown out the window as well. So this is really hard for the three to recognize that their plans are getting thwarted all the time. Now, the type fours, um, how they're reacting to the pandemic is that their emotions are very up and down. At times they're worried, but at other and and they also can feel very lonely and not understood with the struggles that they have in the moment but they also have the their emotions they're feeling the emotions of others so fours can sense the emotions of others and it can be overwhelming like a tsunami so not only do they have their own feelings that they're dealing with the ups and downs but they also are dealing with the emotions of others because they can feel it they sense that they have this intuition and so it is like a tsunami, both their own and others. And so you can find them withdrawing at times to try to sort out what's going on. But then at other times they're like, hey, everything's gonna be fine. And they just kind of are navigating through the waters, not trying to make it such a big deal. So there's kind of this up and down, um, engaged and not engaged for the fours. And so to recognize 
um, their emotions as tsunamis because a lot of times other types are like hey don't get so emotional or it's not that big of a deal um, or you know something in that realm like don't be so sad or don't be so overreactive whatever it is that is not what you want to do for the four because it's like telling someone where a tsunami is coming at them that you would say hey don't let it don't let it get you like that's just not possible so how can you come alongside your four and try to understand their emotions um, asking great clarifying questions and sitting with them in the moment that really would mean a lot to them as well um, the type fives how they're reacting to the pandemic is at first they're enjoying this new norm of social distancing right like hey this is this is my gifting social distancing I love it at the same time they're enjoying that until um, they are stuck at home with others and then they realize their space is now invaded and they can't get away from everyone and so their inner resources are completely being depleted so on one side the pandemic gives them what they're desiring the ability to kind of like be away from others and then at the same time it's forcing them to be with others in ways that they haven't experienced a long time and so for fives to recognize it's like a cell phone battery and I've talked about that before their inner resources it's like they wake up every day with 20 to 25 percent interactive battery life well if everyone is at home where do they go to recharge because if they've got kids at home and the spouse is now working at home and the animals like they're all coming out you right or your wife is working at home or whatever the situation is it is a constant intrusion on their space and it will literally feel like catastrophic depletion is about to happen so the way that you can really help your fives is one ask where their internal battery is and how can you help them to have time and privacy uh, to recharge and that will be really important for the fives to know that you understand them but then also let them know what you need so hey yeah go have some time alone I'll keep the kids or let's turn off notifications whatever's going on so that you can have that time but I'm also gonna need you over here so let's like a give-and-take but that would be really meaningful for the fives now the six is how they're reacting to the pandemic is that they're either they feel man I have prepared for this my entire life I am ready to go um, and they feel it's interesting because I know a lot of people are thinking oh sixes are the ones that are thinking of all worst-case scenarios and, and they're kind of gonna ever be everywhere but that's actually not the case usually in a crisis the sixes are calm and focused and they're ready because they plan for it they thought of all the worst-case scenarios now this worst-case scenario some of us have never planned for right um, and so for those that don't feel fully prepared because this is such an unknown um, they can feel anxious and really kind of get spun out with worst case scenarios because the news is popping up with things that are different every single day that maybe they hadn't planned for and so either the sixes are gonna feel ready to go focused dialed in in a crisis or they can feel spun out with uh, worst case thinking so it can kind of go both ways so it can be really helpful for you just to listen and ask your type sixes how are they doing what are they experiencing um, are they feeling like they can get in there or do they feel spun out and then to listen to them and not go oh it's gonna be okay say you know what yeah that's true this is this is a really hard season what can we do to kind of help um, make sure that you feel comfortable in this moment now our type sevens the majority are struggling with being trapped and feeling that they're missing out on everything that the world has offered them right up to this point the world just had so much opportunity and it's all closing down like it's all stopping and they're missing out on what was and they feel trapped because there's nothing to do there's nowhere to go um, and so a lot of them are dreaming of what they could do like planning and strategizing some are actually going on um, a lot of them actually are going and planning trips getting air flights that are super cheap um, and some of them are even trying to take those trips now like staying in quarantine a lot of them but staying going somewhere so they're not feeling trapped at home but one of the greatest fears of a seven is being trapped in emotional pain deprived limited bored and missing out 
guys, this is exactly what the sevens are kind of having to do right now. And then to, on top of it, they've got their family that's demanding stuff of them, things need to happen. This can be a real struggle for our sevens. So for those that are with sevens and they're wanting to love them, to recognize this is a really hard time. It's not like they can just go and do like they used to. So coming up with alternative ideas that are fun and exciting. Um, yes, we have to do life. We have to take care of the things that need to be taken care of. But what can we do in this season that's different? Like I even saw the other day on the news, you know what's coming back? drive through theaters. Yeah. Stay with your quarantine family, go to a drive in, watch a movie. I mean, I was like, yes, that is so true. You're social distancing at a movie theater. What can we do to help our sevens have fun and to, um, make something different and new, right? That is really what we're all looking for. Then for our type eights, our eights and how they're reacting. A lot of times eights in this scenario, they are ready to conquer the virus. The virus right now is an enemy number one for all of us. And they are ready to conquer it and to do every day, everything they can to protect themselves, their family, and their friends, and their country, and whatever is their primary focus. Seven or eights are amazing at plowing a path for others like a snow plow, and I've talked about that before. They can plow a path. The hard thing for the eight is that, are they able to, can they? A lot of us are restricted at home and we can't do the things that we feel we need to do for our family members or those around us. And so the injustice that the eight see that is happening right now, whether it's um, the injustice that, you know, there's not enough medical supplies, there's not enough testing kits or whatever it feels like for them, it can really rile them up because they want to do something, but they are restricted from doing certain things. And that can be super frustrating and hard. So we can come alongside our eights and thank them for the desire to do and actually doing what they can do to protect us, our family, our community, our livelihood, our churches, they are ready to go and we want to thank them for that um, because we need them. We need them in that capacity. When, when there is a time and a place for them to get at it, we want them to go and to take care of us. They are so amazing. Now, last but not least, my type, uh, the type nines. How are we reacting to the pandemic? And though I read a lot of yours, this is one that is true for me. So the type nines, uh, we fluctuate from it's gonna be fine like don't let's not worry about it let's not focus on the news too much let's just kind of stay in the surreal atmosphere like it's gonna be fine we'll, we'll figure it out the, they'll get a medicine blah 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 then we go from that to worst case thinking the worst is coming we watch the news we get overwhelmed we think of all the things that can happen because remember the nine in stress can move to the average the unhealthy parts of six I know for me, I'm either, it's gonna be fine, I don't wanna think about it, to I literally can see all the things that could happen. And I'm planning, I'm predicting, I'm navigating, but at the same time, because I'm not a six and I don't think or I can hold the capacity of all that the sixes think, I get so overwhelmed. It feels like a two liter Coke inside is being shooken up, all that pressure and I just wanna shut down. So I go from, it's fine, to, oh my gosh, the worst is about to come. And then I wanna dive into either the bed, Netflix, video games, you name it, to shut down. Um, and that can be hard because then I am also shutting out relationships that can be really tricky um, for those that need me to show up, whether it's you, whether it's my family, uh, my community, I need to show up. So others out there when you see your nines it's okay to oh my gosh the worst is going to happen to shut down letting them recognize that it's hard for them to express themselves because that two liter coke with all the pressure they're afraid just to open it because what's going to happen and whatever that's going to be they fear that's going to harm relationship they need a safe place to be able to express all that's happening inside usually they suppress it but they need a safe place to say it but not a place where they say it and then someone's like, oh, it's gonna be fine or don't worry about it or, oh no, that's not the way you should think. What they really need is for someone to just listen, 
to be receptive, open, non-judgmental, and to say, wow, that's gotta be really hard. That would be very helpful because that's the nine things that they shouldn't talk, they shouldn't say anything. And we need to open them up and say what's going on because then the pressure internally calms down when they feel heard. And they know that some of the things that they're saying isn't necessarily gonna happen, but they have to have an outlet. So if they know that they have a safe place to talk, you're gonna see them calm down and you're gonna see them to be able to be more engaged and able to go and do. So we all are reacting to this pandemic differently from our own set of lenses. And really where that comes from is the core motivations of each of the nine types. The core fear, what we're running away from and trying to prevent, the core desire, what we're longing for or what we're striving for to make life perfect. Our core weakness, this is our Achilles heel, the thorn in our side that's tripping us up all the time and our core longing, the message our heart longs to hear. You can find the core motivations for all nine types for free at yourenneagramcoach.com forward slash core motivations. yourenneagramcoach.com forward slash core motivations. And that will help you to see the lens that everyone is reacting, or how they're seeing the world, interpreting it, and then reacting to it. And so then you can come alongside your family members, teammates, and say, hey, I see that you're a type two. Are, are you struggling with this, this, and this? How can I come alongside and help you? Or whatever type it is. This is the time that we all need to be honest that we're struggling. I mean, we're struggling. But this is also the time for us to focus on Christ and to allow him to work in and through us, for us to have a vision of hope of what our type is like at our best. And so I'm gonna go through some different series of like what we're like at our best. And right now I'm doing a series on the virtues. And in the virtues, that is us at our best. So take note of the virtues. Look at what I have been posting so that you can kind of have a place to pray for. Oh. Lord, will you help me to have that? I can't do it on my own, but I know that you wanna work in and through me for that to happen. And then come alongside each other, cheer each other on, listen to one another, don't be reactive, have a non-anxious presence, ask clarifying questions, give clarifying statements, and recognize that God is in control. He is sovereign, he is good, he loves us, this is not a surprise to him, and he is right by our side. All right, I hope this has been helpful for you guys. We'll do some more of these and guiding you in this uncertain world of COVID-19.